Can you still recall Namdi Kanu's speech today? That Buhari's plan is to Islamize Nigeria. Nigeria Catholic group CAS's NGO bill as attempt to promote Islam a proposed new law in Nigeria would allow the government to exercise control over projects implemented by NGOs. The leader of Caritas Nigeria has raised an alarm, noting that under Nigerian law, religious groups are incorporated as NGOs. The debate is happening during heightening religious tension in the country, which is almost evenly divided between Muslims and Christians. Yaounde, Cameroon, a proposed law to regulate non-governmental and civil society organizations in Nigeria will be used to promote Islam, according to a leading Catholic group. The Nigerian House of Representatives is scrutinizing the bill introduced by Deputy House Leader, Umar Jibrin, which would establish a commission to regulate the functioning of non-governmental organizations and civil society organizations. Jibrin has argued the bill is intended to bring sanity to a sector that enjoys wide-scale corruption, and can potentially endanger the security of the country. Recent developments have shown that some people registered NGOs, solicited for funds and disappeared, he said defending the bill, adding that some NGOs are used to fund the activities of terrorists and insurgents. Jibrin said he wants to ensure accountability and transparency in the way NGOs collect and manage funds, and that the proposed commission will be empowered to facilitate and coordinate the work of all national and international NGOs, as well as to provide policy guidelines to harmonize their activities in line with the national development plan determined by the government. It will also exercise control over projects implemented by NGOs. And this has raised concerns among some Catholic organizations, who note that under Nigerian law, religious groups are incorporated as NGOs. Caritas Nigeria and JDPC observe that most Catholic dioceses and archdioceses and Christian churches that are registered in Nigeria under the CAC are registered as incorporated trustees and therefore fall under the NGO categorization, therefore, unless a separate categorization is established for religious organizations, by law they are seen as incorporated trustees and therefore as NGOs, said Father Everestus Basi, the executive director of Caritas Nigeria. The priest also wondered if the law would be used to promote Islam over Christianity in the country. Knowing fully well that his religion demands him to use his position to promote and protect religion, is this Honorable Umar's subtle way of promoting and protecting his religion by setting up a framework in which others might be persecuted, he asked. Jibrin is a Muslim, as is the president of Nigeria, Muhammad Buhari. The debate is happening during heightening religious tension in the country, which is almost evenly divided between Muslims, who predominate in the north, and Christians, who are mainly concentrated in the south. Christians in the north of the country have suffered from terrorist attacks from groups such as Boko Haram, as well as living under northern state governments that have implemented Sharia law. Recently, the nation's Catholic bishops have complained that the national government has labeled the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, a terrorist organization for advocating for a referendum on independence for the Igbo area in southeast Nigeria. In 1967, Biafra had declared its independence, which was recognized by Gabon, Haiti, Ivory Coast, Tanzania, and Zambia, but was crushed by Nigeria in 1970. The war killed between 500,000 and 2 million people. Cardinal John Anadiekin, the Archbishop of Abuja, said that although he finds the position of IPOB unacceptable, they are not terrorists. My understanding of a terrorist is a deadly armed activist, he told Premium Times. I don't think, merely speaking, or talking or threatening will add up to being a terrorist. At the same time, the Cardinal notes Muslim Fulani herdsmen attacking Christian villagers have not been designated as terrorists. The Fulani herdsmen who are armed, lethal, murderous, vicious and have been killing people in our communities, they are the ones that we are waiting for, to see what the government will do. If you recall, the bishops' conference called on the government to treat them as terrorists, Anadiakin said. The government's different attitude toward the Christian and Muslim groups is the background to the controversy over Gibran's bill. Christians are concerned that the proposed commission's 17 members would all be appointed exclusively by the president, and would issue licenses for NGOs to function. 
This would give the government a huge amount of control of Nigeria's NGOs, including religious organizations. Basie said Jibril's disruptive effort is highly suspicious, especially against the backdrop of such security threats as the herdsmen attacks which are being seen as part of a sinister agenda of domination. But Catholic groups are not the only bodies standing up against the bill. Civicus, the Global Civil Society Alliance, and the Nigeria Network of NGOs, GO, have both raised concerns the legislation in its present form could scuttle the activities of NGOs and limit the civic space in Nigeria. We must instead strengthen civic space in Nigeria, as our sector's role in finding solutions to the enormous challenges facing our nation cannot be overemphasized says Oyebizi Olasei, executive director of NGO. He noted the NGO sector is already regulated by seven legal frameworks and overseen by five government agencies. Mondip Tiwana, head of policy and research from Civicus described the bill as patently undemocratic because it weakens the ability of civil society to expose corruption and rights violation. He said that NGOs are voluntary organizations which act as partners of the government in the development process and therefore the need for a commission to serve this purpose arises. The ongoing controversy of the proposed law comes in the wake of a strong statement from the Nigerian Bishops' Conference questioning the government's commitment to the rule of law. On September 15, the bishops declared, Our country is currently passing through a phase that is marked by tension, agitation, and a general sense of hopelessness and dissatisfaction. This we believe is as a result of years of injustice, inequity, corruption, and impunity. The statement also said, people of different religions need to coexist, communicate, and be allowed to freely practice their respective religions everywhere in this country. It is no more news that Mohamed Bouhari and the entire APC are trying to Islamize this nation. This is true beyond any doubt. Bouhari once ruled this nation far back in the 80s and then, he made great effort to convert the whole populace of this nation to Muslims but his plan failed as Yaqub Yagawan and other bigwig military people didn't give their consent. Here is the full origin of the Islamization process. Major General Olusegun Obasanjo strongly did all the underground work to make sure he didn't succeed, because then, he was a strong Christian. So, he fought against it and won. Badamosi Bebanjida in 1986 was upset because he was in support of the Islamization, therefore, he began to seek OBJ's downfall, but Yaqub Yagawan was in support of OBJ so it was difficult for IBB to touch him. Later, in 1986, Bebanjida sponsored MKO Abiola to destroy the Bible, which he did by sinking two million Bibles in the sea, yes, just under the third mainland bridge. All these was jeered towards Islamizing the nation. However, MKO Abiola's secret was revealed and Dili Jawa, the founder of Daily Times, decided to put the news in his dailies. Bebanjida warned him against doing so, but he didn't listen, so IBB sent him a letter bomb and he exploded and died. MKO and Dili Jawa were somehow related. MKO didn't know that IBB will kill Dili Jawa because he has spoken to Dili Jawa by himself and the editor has promised not to publish it anymore, unknown to IBB. MKO Abiola was sad as the thought of Dili Jawa's death disturbed his mind. He began to find a way of revealing the secret. MKO Abiola knew that he cannot tell the true life story of Dili Jawa's death and go scot-free except if he is the number one citizen of Nigeria so he opted for the presidential candidate under the aegis of SDP. Bebanjida supported him at first, but Mustafa, the watchdog of Sunni Abacha, who was then a close friend of Bebanjida, understood the plot of MKO Abiola and declared it to IBB. IBB was upset. He called Abiola and talked to him, but Abiola denied the allegation. However, Bebanjida was wiser. He didn't believe MKO's story, so he made Tofa his presidential candidate in 1993 election. Abiola won the election with a wide margin, but Bebanjida cancelled the election and put Idiogban there before Major General Sani Abacha took over. Sank Abacha's plan was to join hands with Boeri and Bebanjida to Islamize Nigeria, so they began to terminate the lives of all who are not in support. 
the lives of Kensaro Waiva also went for it. Oleta Podia, a Christian soldier, knew the plot and planned coup to kill Abacha, but Mustafa heard it and told Abacha who quickly imprisoned them and got set to kill them all. At last, Abacha was killed by divine intervention and the imprisoned ones were released. Obasanjo, who has been imprisoned for so long was also released after agreeing never to mention anything about the suspended Islamization thing. He swore to an oath before Baybanjida and Abdul Salam Abubakar as well as the then Emir of Sokoto, that he will not talk about the issue of Islamization, so they supported him for the presidency which he won. Obasanjo wanted to leave power in the hand of a Christian to avoid Islamization after his eight-year tenure, but calls from Muslim extremists, including Baybanjida, made him have a second thought. OBJ knew that only one Muslim person will have no mind to Islamize Nigeria, and such was Yoradua who is very weak and unhealthy. Obasanjo's third-term campaign was as a result of not wanting to release power to Atiku Abubakar, his vice president who happens to be a Muslim and is capable of Islamizing the nation. So wise OBJ quarreled with Atiku and nominated Yaradua to the presidency. Obasanjo, having preempted Yaradua's death, advised him to make Jonathan his vice which he did. The plan was that Yaradua will die and Jonathan, a Christian, will take over power to avoid Islamization. Jonathan's announcement as the president made Boari to weep, because he thought it was going to hinder him of performing his zeal of Islamization like Gondoki. Now, Boari is desperate to take the power from Jonathan by all means. Good morning, my people. Good morning. Um, I hope you have had it all. All this information that is coming in now is a very sad uh, news. The Battle of Islamazin Nigeria didn't start today. My people, I don't know what to say. Now I knew why they want Nam De Kalu death. Because Nigerian government, I think, have figured out that somebody have handed in a very powerful information to Nam De Kalu that make Nam De Kalu to start um, what he's doing today with a tangible information. But the entire Nigeria failed to understand Nam De Kalu today because our people do wake up very late. But I'm using this opportunity to talk to you now. This information that I'm sharing with you just came in. The battle of Islamizing Nigeria. Listening to my people. Listening my people all. Both from Yoruba, from northern Nigeria to the southern part of Nigeria. From north, east, west. This game is not the game of the Biafrans. This game is not only for the eastern region this game have the only people that will give them headache is the eastern region people and they are trying everything that is in their position to make sure that they neutralize the eastern region and then take care of the rest if you listen to this video replay it once again you will be able to figure out what i'm trying to tell you Buhari is not for good. Buhari have been trying to Islamize Nigeria since 1978 to 2017. These hesmen that are patrolling everywhere are one of their tools. And they can never ever declare them terrorists. Boko Haram is a cover-up. All these things are pre-planned. But, together we are strong. Now is no longer the time of these people are IPOB, this one is this one. They are fighting for the freedom of the entire nation. Now, do you know that Christian organizations, Catholic Church, uh, Anglican churches, are being registered under NGOs in Nigeria? Now, Nigeria is planning to pass a bill. That bill is now on House of Representatives. They are debating about this bill. This bill will neutralize every NGO operating in Nigeria. That means both the Christian organizations will be neutralized. 
Even you can go to prison by going to church. If they really interpret it how it's stated. That means the only organization that is not under this NGO is Islam. So when this bill is being passed, that means all Christians in that nation have been handcuffed. You will beg to attend to a church. Or if you dare pray in your room and police came, you can go to prison. Stand up today. Join IPOB. Stand up today. Join the Eastern Region people. Not only for the independent or not to the um, whatever, but to fight for the liberation of the nation. Let us rescue. In short, let everybody go this way. Because I don't believe that I will be under this government that will try to Islamize me, change my belief to turn it to whatever they believe upon. It is better we separate. It's better we go for referendum. I am calling on all Nigerians today listening to my voice. No matter, not only if, even though Buhari didn't succeed, the game will not stop there. As you can recall, this thing started before IBB or from IBB. We must divide that nation. Stand up. Join hand with IPOB. Are you a lawyer? Are you a government worker? Are you in Senate? Are you a governor? Are you whatever? From any part of Nigeria, as far as you are a Christian, you have to know that your freedom is under threat. You, Nigeria is no longer to guarantee your security. And call all the legislators from House of Rep to the Senate, those that you voted in, made them to understand. You could remember during the time of grazing bill, I still come to this channel and I inform you the secret plan of grazing bill. The grazing bill, thank God, they push it down. Now is the indirect Islamization of Nigeria through the back door. And it is your duty to call, pick your phone, call all the legislators that you guys voted in, both to House of Rep, House of Senate, make them to understand you what you believe on. You don't want that bill passed. And as you are doing that, start to support and fight for the rule of law in Nigeria to make Nam De Kalo be free so that all the whole thing that is in his chambers, he will release it. You know, when he was in prison, he said he will say something that Nigeria will break. There is something with him. He's not bluffing. He's not making mouth. He has a secret, not an ass plan. You may ask yourself, why do Obasanjo keep quiet? May, by this, um, what I just played, made you to understand. Obasanjo took an oath to keep the secret, or else they will kill him. But the secret is now leaking, thanks to social media, everything is now open, so that we can be able to inform the whole world what is going on in Nigeria. And this one now, IPOB said they will not fight. They are not violent. But in terms of this Islamization that Buhari is bringing may blow up that nation. We are not ready to look back. It's now to fight for your right. Fight for your freedom. Fight for the freedom of your children. children. The history made us to understand the way this um, um, Fulanese operate. Do you know that Fulanese have occupied Yoruba before? Ask Yorubas the history of Yoruba land. They started like this. Gradually, gradually, they overrun Yorubas. But when they try to kill their king, it's when the Yorubas understand the secret plan of the Fulanese and they battle them out of their territory. That game has started again and they are coming again gradually. That's all I have for you. A word is enough for the wise. Bye-bye for now, and remember, bless.